Hey guys, this is Seth from SU Fly Fishing. Hey guys, this is Seth Underwood with SU Fly Fishing. Hey guys, this is Seth from SU Fly Fishing. Hey guys, it's Seth from SU Fly Fishing. Hey guys, this is SU Fly Fishing. Hey guys, it's Seth from SU Fly Fishing. Hey guys, it's Seth from SU Fly Fishing. Hey guys, it's Seth from SU Fly Fishing. Hey guys, Seth from SU Fly Fishing. Hey guys, Seth from SU Fly Fishing. Well, first year of YouTube in the bag. Um, seen some growth, seen some subscribers, seen some, uh, you know, people that seem to enjoy. Um, and uh, I've done a lot of fishing, a lot of learning. Um, I've picked up some things. Um, I've tried to get better. I hope I've gotten better. And uh, I'm real excited. This is my first year of doing uh, YouTube, and uh, I'm not tired of it. I'm not, you know, frustrated. So I'm glad that it went relatively well. Um, what we're going to do for the end of the year is we're going to do a top 10 and a worst 10. So top 10 things that happened to me that were good. Top 10 things that happened to me were bad. Okay. Now, these are opinions of things that I remember causing stress during that trip. Um, and uh, some are heartbreaking, some are um, funny, and some are just bad circumstances. So, I hope y'all enjoy when I do my best and worst of 2022 Top 10 Edition. Alright, first thing we're going to do is the bad number 10, okay? The bad number 10 isn't horrible but it is something that caused some stress by the end of the day we were both cold we were both ready to go home we both were tired both were sore and that's um on our first drift in vincent's new raft we felt um both of us got water in our waders we're both wet we both started getting cranky and anyone that's ever floated and they got wet and soaked and then they have to float another mile and a half when it starts getting cold you know what i'm talking about. it just isn't a good time so we ended up uh, enjoying ourselves, but falling was not uh, was not in the cards for either of us. So number 10 for good is that trip itself. Um, you can have good and bad on both trips. And the maiden voyage of his raft, um, I don't know if I made it clear, but I had never had the opportunity or chance to ra uh, float or raft um, a tailwater or any kind of water and fly fish your trout while doing so. I've done some whitewater rafting, but I've never done that. And it was a very awesome experience. Me and Vince have been talking about doing it again. Um, we can just get the right flows and we can get, you know, right weather. It's just, it hasn't, and we both are off. So it's one of those things that we're very excited. We're very happy to happen. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can continue to do so. So, number nine. Um, this isn't a very popular video, but it is something that's happened um, on one of my trips. I was casting at this little river um, that I have that has a whole bunch of wild and natives in it, and I wasn't catching anything. I had got my butt, I don't know what, what it was, but the fish just were not eating anything. And on a back cast, I went forward, all my fly line just shot out. And I'm just sitting there, no fish, cold, had lost a bunch of flies, and this was the nail in the coffin for that day. It's just some days are just bad. And it was one of those days where I goose egg, lost some flies, and lost some gear. So, now number nine good thing is probably um, one of the most interesting uh, days I've had fishing. Um, I didn't, I forgot my net. And uh, I was catching fish, but I was struggling landing because without the net, it's kind of hard to get a hold of a big fish. So I was fishing at one spot, and I just met this uh, guy who's a subscriber, Patrick. And uh, Patrick let me borrow his net for two fish. Guy was very nice. Um, me and him, we do uh, contact back and forth. Uh, he's been doing a lot of fishing. He's gotten better. He's uh, progressing. Um, pretty well um, and it, it's just it's good to actually see a face of someone and know someone that's subscribed and they can be honest with you and let you know if they're enjoying it if it's helped them and uh, and Patrick's giving me nothing but positive feedback so honest pleasure to meet him and I'm glad you know I'm glad I was able to that day 
Number eight, bad thing. This is a compilation of on the second, I want to say the second Cole Chronicles. I, for some reason, was losing fish after fish after fish. I caught probably close to 25, 30 fish, but I lost 10, including two really nice fish. One good rainbow 18 to 20 inch and one brown 18 to 20 inch. And it was just, I was getting my butt kicked. And it's one of those days where you just feel like you can't do anything right. You can't hook up right. You don't know what's going on. Um, I tweaked it a little bit, did some watching it and, and realized, you know, there's some things I was yanking very hard on the fish. And um, a lot of times I was waiting until I felt the tick from the Euro, uh, Euro um, you know, setup. And a lot of times you you um, you need to act on how the line is. So if you're drifting a line and it's at this angle and then it just that that little thing right there hook up. So that day was a humbling experience for me um, as far as missing fish. And um, I'm glad that I did have it because it seems like I turned a corner with hooking the mess out of fish and just missing a bunch. Um, I'm doing much better with it. And I hope that it continues. I continue to improve in that aspect. The number eight good thing to happen is this massive hybrid uh, shell cracker. It is enormous um i've never caught a uh panfish of that size um maybe some crappie have come close but that thing was massive um i've never had to use both my hands to hold a panfish so i'm really glad that, that happened um it was a fun day a lot of smallmouth a lot of perch and when i mean perch i mean like bluegill uh, red ear, um, red breast, just, just a lot of good time. I, I caught a trout when I wasn't fishing for it, uh, rock bass. It was just a good warm water fish day. So that was an awesome time. Also that, uh, on my, on my TikTok, it actually blew up as far as fishing videos go. And I got like close to half a million views. So it was a really good video, um, as far as people liking it. And it was an uh, honestly it was a joy to catch so the number seven bad thing is um from this past spring i was catching fish i was being confident and you know how when you're feeling confident and you're doing well you do really stupid things well i hooked into a fish and this fish was massive um i don't know exactly how big but it wasn't a small fish it would it'd be my pb brown trout uh, i i believe um, I hooked into it and it took me downstream and instead of me running to try to get behind it and get correct, you know, positioning and try to get, you know, put my rod tip down and pull it. I just let it go downstream without anything. And then before, and then all of a sudden I realized, Hey, that's not a good idea. There's a bunch of, you know, debris and, and structure down there. Then get into. So I start running downstream and this fish, by the time I got downstream and had gotten it right and gotten the, started fighting it correctly, it had wrapped itself up in a tree and had gotten itself, a, uh, was rubbing up against a concrete pylon. And it was one of those things where I, uh, me being arrogant, kind of, it, it, it's funny how fish, when you're acting really cocky and arrogant, like you know everything, you learn something and you get humbled. So that was one of the hum more humbling experiences was when I got outsmarted by a big brown trout. Number seven is mine and Vincent's first trip brown trout. Um, me and Vincent met and we're fishing buddies in last fall. And we had hung out a few times and we'd gone fishing. Um, we, we had gone fishing and we had talked about going fishing again and just hanging out. And, you know, went to one river, but the river was blown out before this. So it wasn't really fishing. But this is our first technical trip of us hanging out, going fishing. And we, I, I was able to, you know, cap it off with a, a wonderful 22 inch brown trout. Um, Vincent caught a bunch of fish too. We caught a bunch of trout, but that brown trout seemed to like put a cap on our trip together, our first trip. And it just, it was a good time. I remember that day we caught probably 30, 40 fish and it was freezing cold and windy and the sun was up, but we caught fish. So it was a good time. 
it's one of those uh, moments that I'm very happy I got on camera. And uh, yeah, you'll probably see a lot more of me and Vincent going uh, floating and going after big brown trout and just having a good time. So number six is from uh, Cole Chronicles 2. Um, it's almost become a joke between me and Vincent about tags on Euro setup. The traditional Euro setup has, uh, from the knot, has about, I'd say, a foot to a foot and a half of tippet for your point fly, and then you have a tag fly about six to ten inches off of that. And this tag fly has lost me and Vincent probably six or seven really good fish. And this video is basically me, it, it, me just being fed up. I, 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 after this point, I don't, if I'm putting on a tag, it's because I have no idea what they're eating and I'm just trying to get a bite. So I, I, this made me a advent hater of tags. And it's one of those things where the more I look at it, the more I, I wish I had listened to, you know, my own common sense. And that I, you know, instead of being greedy and trying to put all the flies on. So, a single fly just seems to work better. Now, number six good thing is my biggest fish on my lightest line. Um, this rainbow was close to, uh, I, I wanted, it was between 22 and 23 inches. And me and Vince had talked, it was about six pounds. And that was caught on 7X. It was a tough day. They weren't eating. So, I went down to 7X thinking maybe I'll get a bite and literally as soon as I go down to 7x it I just feel you know a, a weight on my line I hook up and it's this thing it's massive massive rainbow um it's one of those things where I had I had been using um light line but it was kind of it, it showed me that if I fight it right and I do right I can catch big fish on 7x and I won't I don't have to tire them out I can get them in pretty quickly. I still prefer using six and set, uh, six and a half X on um, bodies of water that fish are tippet shy, but if needed, I can catch fish on seven X. So I've been purchasing flies from JW um, for a little bit over three years now. He has made me everything from eggs, micro streamers, small streamers, and nymphs. He ties small flies, he ties junk flies, he ties just about everything. And if he doesn't do it, he'll point you in the right direction. Guy's a good guy, he's genuine, he's honest, and he'll let you know straight up what, it, what to expect. And if there's an issue, he will do his best to fix it and mend this issue right away. Customer service is great, project is great. And if you're looking for any of the flies that I use in my videos, please contact JW Flies. Alright, back to the video. Now, number five bad thing is Vincent hates tags. <laughs> this fish was a good, from what we saw, between 23 and 25 inch brown trout. This was a great fish. Um, and he had been fighting it for about five or six minutes and it started, he was starting able to turn it. He was getting real side. It went on one more run and we knew, it, it, we could feel it. It was, it was it. Like we were gonna get this fish. And then you see a little flash, and then all the weight's gone besides a little par mark. And I believe me and Vincent at that point realized that tags are becoming more of a detriment. And this is our opinion. Tags are more of a detriment than a help when fishing for big fish. So uh, that was the day that Vincent pretty much just swore off tags altogether. So it's just, it's one of those things we learned. Fishing for really big fish on very light tackle, you need to just probably stick with one fly. So number five good thing is my buddy Austin coming to visit us from uh, Arizona. And this is his PB wild fish, um, PB rainbow. And it, having Austin here was an awesome time. We had a great time. We fished really, we fished um, and had a good time together. He, he, we caught a lot of fish. We had a good time, but me seeing him catch that 16, 17 inch wild rainbow and it being his PB just made the trip that much better. And it's one of those memories that I'm glad I have on videotape and I can watch and, and revisit. So 
Now, the number four bad thing, broken rods. I have uh, twice on video, me and Vincent breaking rods. One where I was broke, where I broke my Euro rod, and one where Vincent broke his uh, Winston Pure on the top of a bridge. Now, luckily, we had um, warranties, and we had we had you know we could replace them or repair them pretty cheap. But every fisherman knows the feeling it was when you're out, you're fishing, you're having a good time, and you just you hear it, you hear that, you hear the snap, you hear the the, the loud pop. And it just makes your heart sink. So those experience, the breaking of rods on the videos are my number four because it just, it hurts when you hear a broken rod. My number four um, good uh, experience is when I caught three 18 to 22 inch fish in 30 minutes, not including a whole bunch of others. It was just it was a spot where all the fish had lined up and I was just catching fish after fish after fish. Good fish, big fish. I had caught, I think in total in that video, um, well, at that time I didn't have many batteries, but I had, if I kept videotaping, I think in that spot, in the little time I had, just in that spot, I caught 15, 20 fish. And what that day showed me is that a lot of times fish Regardless of how small the area is or how shallow, if there is food coming into it and there is structure, fish will put themselves into some weird spots. So I had a blast that day. It was a great day, a lot of good fish, and I'm glad I got it videotaped. Um, that way, whenever I'm struggling to catch big fish, I can look back and be like, yeah, you can catch big fish. Look, look, look at this video, Seth, see, see? Make myself feel better about myself, so. Now, number three bad experience is when I stepped on a spike and almost ended my trip, and it more or less just spooked me more so than anything. Um, it was not a good time. It, it, it. The only reason I put this above the fishing rods is because with the fishing rods, I we can fix them. It's just it just puts a damper on your day. That made me realize that I can never wear shoes in this body of water ever again. And it would have put me in the hospital if it had of reached my foot. Not put me in the hospital long term, but it, I would have had to go get stitches. I would have had to go get that closed up. Um, and it's just one of those things where whenever you're walking or, or you're wading the river, sometimes you forget that people just throw stuff in water. I've cut my foot open on glass bottles. I've cut my foot open on uh, cat food lids. And I almost had a spike go through my foot. So wear your boots, um, be careful, look where you're stepping. And uh, hopefully I don't have to deal with that again. So now number three experience for this video was Vincent's first big West Virginia Brown. Um, he hooked it up, he hooked up right when I was changing batteries, so I didn't get the hook up. I was able to, we were sitting there, and I put Vince on that fish. I put Vince in on that fish. And my man, it took him a couple casts, but he was able to drift a little red dart past that fish, and he came over a rock and ate it in turn. Uh, I was, I think I might have been more happy than Vincent, but it was such a good fish. It was such an elation. We'd been fishing that whole day for a good, for a shot at a good brown trout. And finally, we got one. And it was his first big brown in West Virginia. And he was just, he was a happy, happy guy. I was happy, happy. And it just put a, put an exclamation point on the day. So now number two, bad experience. Number two bad experience is something that I think if you fish long enough, this has happened to you. Um, I've had this happen several times. Um, luckily, um, it's barbless, so I can pull them out. But this hook was not barbless, and I was reaching up to grab the hook out of a tree, 
get my fly tree and another fly that was in there went up through my hands as the tree was coming up and the hook went right into my thumb. Now, we had made the decision that either we go to the emergency room and, uh, you know, pay them a bunch of money to numb it up and do it themselves, or we could do it for free. And since Vincent is a PA, he knows what he's doing. So we sit there, he clamped down with his forceps and uh, we grunted it out. So it was, it was not a fun time. Um, I, my thumb hurt for the next few days, uh, but you know, it wasn't anything too bad. I still, I still fished afterwards. Still caught fish, still had a good time. So, now the number two um, best moment uh, is the last minute brown I got on Coal Country Chronicles 3. It, we had been fishing for a big brown all day. All day. And it just, it wasn't working for us. Um, we had gone all up and down looking for fish and we had fished so many little pockets of water. The best fish we got was about a 20 inch rainbow that Vincent got and no browns were cooperating. We both had shots and it was just, they didn't want to stay pinned or they just weren't having it. So I literally say, hey, I'm gonna throw this down uh, up and down one more time and then we'll leave. And I put one little twitch and one strip and then I went to fix my line. And before I, I like, I just heard something smack the water. I looked and my line was going and my rod was just, the, my rod was starting to bend over. I hooked into that fish. It was a beautiful female brown. We got it at 21 inches. It, it was one of those fish that when you hook into it and you get it in the net, it's just, it feels, makes the whole day feel worth it. So, so this is the number one good and bad experience. Uh, first we'll do the bad. It is when I lost the biggest brown trout I have ever had on a fly line, ever. It, I fought that fish about as good as I, I probably could have fought it. Um, I was fishing, I was using six and a half X tippet so I couldn't horse it in. <laughs> and we're at the eight or nine minute mark where I'm trying to get this fish in because I don't want to fight it over a certain, I don't want to fight it too long because then you run a risk of killing the fish. So I finally get it to where I feel like the fish is giving up and wouldn't you know it, it has one more pull in, uh, pull in it and it pulls itself out in front of a rock into the only tree branch in that whole daggum stretch. And I lose possibly the biggest brown trout on my life. And that hurt. I, I sat and sulked and was upset about that for hours. I'm still upset about it. What am I talking about? And whenever you hook into and lose a fish like that, you just... It, it, it does something. It just it just makes you one of two things. It makes you driven to catch it, or just hurts your feelings enough where you just want to go home. Luckily, I stayed and kept fishing. Still caught some fish. Still had a good time. But that has to be the the most heartbreaking thing to happen this past year. Now, my number one good experience was with um, Austin, and that is my PB brown trout. Um, I was very lucky. We hit it on a very good day. We, they had been getting some rain. The water was coming up and that brown trout had moved into this little feeding lane that was a little bit shallower, but the water had come up and was starting to wash things off, um, off of the typically dry dirt and washing all that stuff down into this little current. So the fish was eating, eating. And I saw the fish after it followed my, um, Euro rig, um, and, but didn't eat it. So I sat there tied on a uh, hare's ear, uh, a caddis, and a holy grail and put them all together, a dry dropper rig. And uh, wouldn't you know it, my, I want to say it was probably my, no, it was my third drift through, I get a hookup. And I have one of the most fun and epic fights I've ever had in my life. It was wonderful. I fought the fish for maybe six, seven minutes, but the fact that I, 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 I was able to get that fish in on six and a half X, you know, it was six X. The fact that I was able to get that fish on six X within a appropriate time was just awesome. 
So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody who subscribed, to everybody who's watched, everyone who supported the channel. Um, thanks to friends that I've met. Thanks to uh, you know people that I um, I talk with a lot. I, I got I've met, made quite a few friends this past year that are just good fishing buddies, and I have some old friends that I that I was able to hang out with and and you know talk fishing. Um, but it's been a good year. I'm very happy about it. And I hope next year is just as educational. I hope that I learn um, just as much. I hope that I catch a lot of fish. And um, I hope that, you know, uh, that the channel continues to grow. You know, it's a slow burn. But uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that it has grown and I can't wait, you know, to see it grow with y'all. And uh, again, thank y'all. So... If y'all have any questions, please leave a comment. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. And as always, guys, tight lines and blessings. Yeah! Yes!